Hi, this is Teal from Pocketblocks.com. A few days ago, someone commented on my YouTube channel saying that she likes color swatches. So that's where I get the idea for today's video. Today, I want to talk about color swatches and how you can pin them in a sketchbook like this and whether or not they are useful. So let's take a look at what I have. Whenever I buy new watercolors, I would pin out color charts like this to see what kind of mixtures I can get from that particular set of colors. These are painted on loose sheets, which on hindsight, I should probably have uh, painted them in a sketchbook, in a larger sketchbook, because it's more, it's easier to refer to them rather than in uh, loose sheet forms. So today I'm going to show you this sketchbook where I used to uh, paint some color swatches. This is a Steelman and Burn Alpha series sketchbook. It's available in A5 size as well as A4 size. So if you want to paint color charts like the ones that I showed earlier, you should get definitely get the A4 and larger. Another brand of sketchbook that I recommend would be the Global Art Material. They have very big sketchbook as well and they work very well with watercolor. So what do I do inside this sketchbook? Basically I have um, I paint color wheels to try out the different color mixtures that I can get when I paint with uh, primary colors, the yellow, red and blues. And I will mix them together to form some sort of gray or dark black color to see what kind of shade they can achieve. Some colors they don't mix well into a black. For example, here I have a warm version of the color, so they mix to a very warm, warm black color. As compared to here, where I use cool colors, they form when they mix three together, you get a cool black color. Let me zoom in closer. I also do different variations of mixtures, use different portions, like sometimes I will use, for this case, I use Taylor Green and Pyro Crimson, Daniel Smith. So I use more Taylor Green and then I slowly add more water and also add more Pyro Crimson and see just how many different variations of shades that I can get from just these two pigments. Here there's Transparent Pyro Orange and Thalo Blue red shade these are very good uh, reference this is Winsor and, Neutral, Winsor and Newton ultramarine plus burnt sienna ultramarine plus dark brown this is a color chart uh, painted from this Winsor and Newton desert collection a very useful reference to see how the colors mixed. These are 15 colors from Jane Blundell's workshop that I attended a year ago. I collect different um, watercolor brands and the mixtures. This one is from Kramer Pigments. It's nice to have them all in a sketchbook because you can refer to them and compare them very easily. If I want to compare, let's say, Kramer pigments to Daniel Smith, I can do so. These uh, color dots are actually from some template from some art book that I well copied from. I traced the template from the book and then I, onto this paper and then when I want to draw it on this page I will just basically put them behind and trace it over. This paper is about 150 GSM so when you put the paper behind like this you can still see the impression and you can draw very easily over the lines. I leave some blank pages in case I want to fill them up uh, in the future. In addition to watercolors, I also do some. I also use some other materials as well, such as black ink, just to see, just to compare them. 
left some pages in case I'll use more black ink in the future. This is Saint Elier, the French watercolor manufacturer. And looking by looking at these color wheels and color charts, I can immediately tell that Saint Elier they have very they don't have any granulating mixtures, granulating paints in their box set, as compared to let's say. Kramer pigment which is very granulating so this is a very easy way to compare colors across different brands I also use color pencils in this case this is a Derwent graphite graphy tint some sort of tinted color tinted graphite then I have charcoal as well if I use color pencils, then I would need to spray fixative over the pages to fix them. If not, they will smirch. For example, some of these are smirches because for some reason I did not spray fixative. But then I went in to spray the fixative, so now they are okay. You can also, uh, when you spray fixative, sometimes the colors will um, be broken up. In this case, what is this? This is a pastel sticks from Derwent. So for this French ultra, for this ultramarine P two nine zero, when I spray fixative over it, you can see that there's this. Uh, the colors actually break up. This is Derwent graphitin again. I added water to see how the sheets will look like. These are colors from Blocks B L O C K X. So I drew a line across to, um, and then I painted watercolor over the line to see whether or not the colors are transparent. Some colors are not transparent, like yellow ochre. But overall, Blocks colors are at least the ones that I have here are pretty transparent. So these are the, the color wheels I painted with blocks. Because I have so many versions of primary colors like six, seven, seven yellows, three, or maybe six reds and six blues, I can paint many variations. You can test out all the different variations of mixtures you can get from all those primary colors. And in addition to mixing the primary colors, I also uh, try to make some grays from the primary colors this is Prussian blue plus burnt umber ultramarine plus burnt umber so I can see right here that the ultramarine is not as granulating as the ultramarine from um, Daniel Smith and Winston and Newton. So this is very granulating as compared to this. Also Prussian blue, it, the mixture doesn't seem to be, um, it doesn't mix that cleanly. It's very difficult to achieve a flat wash for some reason. Now when you are painting color swatches like this, you, it's important to write down the name of the color so that you do not forget it might be useful um, to also write down the pigment of the colors that could be also very useful because different brands different manufacturers they may use the same name for the color but the pigment that they use is different for example mission go mission go they like to mission go is a korean brand they like to use some funky names for their colors like peacock blue which is actually thalo blue in um, actual fact viridian which is actually thalo green in actual and their burnt sienna is actually some sort of brown orange color which is made of three pigments instead of the usual one pigment and it gives a very different colors when you mix with french ultramarine for example so that's all for my sketchbook of swatches so far. 
So if you want to paint color swatches, I would suggest you go for a larger sketchbook, especially if you want to paint color charts. Because there's no way this sketchbook can fit color charts like this unless you paint the squares really very small. But if you paint the squares that small then it really doesn't give you an accurate impression of how the colors are uh, can be seen when they are used in large washes. So get an A4 sketchbook would be preferable. Uh, that would be a good size for painting color swatches. So that's how I use this sketchbook to create watercolor swatches. I use this mainly to compare different brands of watercolor. It's a very good reference and every time I buy something new, I will just add the colors inside. I also do some mixture. I've had this sketchbook for a few years already and there are still a lot of blank pages for me to fill up. One thing to note is when you're buying a sketchbook, maybe it would be better to buy a thicker sketchbook so you can collect more color swatches. That's all for today's video. Uh, if you have any questions, feel free to ask me in the comment section below and remember to subscribe to my YouTube channel for more sketching tips, our product reviews and sketchbook features. Thanks and have a nice day.